Milo, and thank you once again for joining me on my program. I am on a journey uh, of a series for miracles and healings. And tonight I want to bring to you a topic that I'm just calling for today. You mean there's miracles and healings for today? So today's message, tonight's message is for today, question mark. I want to answer that tonight. So just to set the record straight, once we receive our healing, because we're going to, I want us to know that there's something we're supposed to do. So I want to teach this up front because you're going to receive your healing. You're going to receive your miracle. But there's something to do that follows, and I want to make sure we know what that is. Actually, if we don't, it could hinder us from getting our miracle. And it's found in Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 31. This is when Peter's mother-in-law was healed. Now, as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. Mark uses this as one of the first healing miracles that Jesus performs once his ministry has begun. Jesus had just cast out an unclean spirit in a man uh, in the synagogue. And now he's gone to Simon and Andrew's house. I'm certain he's tired and probably hungry. But when he first gets in, they say, and I'm going to take liberty here, so forgive me, uh, but it, I can just see it this way. The cook is sick. I suspect she was one of the, the family and probably helped prepare the meals. The cook is sick. So my version of this scripture tonight is that the mother-in-law was the cook. She's in bed. She's got a fever. There's no cooking going on in this house tonight. Jesus goes to her and immediately takes her by the hand and she is well. The scripture so clearly says she got up and she went and served them. My thinking is she went back to the kitchen and finished what she had begun. And food was presented to Jesus and the disciples. You see, she received her healing and then went back into what she knew to do. She was obviously a helper. She was a server. She went back to serving them. So I wonder, sometimes when we are sick, and I just want to throw this out, if the Lord healed us, does that mean that we should go back to our ministry? What if we don't want to go back to our ministry? In Galatians 5, 6 through 9, I think Paul sort of addresses this. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. But faith works working through love. Verse 7, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Did you know that disobedience to God can hinder or even stop your ministry? But faith working through through love. That's the kind of faith that God wants us to have through a, a working of love, His love to others, not out of bitterness, not out of uh, commitment that we just need to fulfill. 
nor are we to go to God and tell him how great we are or how great someone else is and therefore, God, you need to heal her or you need to heal me because look what all I've done. Wrong. Don't go with that attitude. You go with a spirit of love and we serve God not because you owe me. We owe him we don't ever want to get that backward. Paul asked, who hindered you from obeying the truth, from continuing on with your service? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Did you know that you can actually quit asking for your healing or your miracle because you know in your heart that if God heals you, you need to get up and go back into the service that God has called you. Oh, you don't want to be sick, but in the depths of your heart, you also just, you didn't want to continue on with what you were doing because honestly, love had dropped. There wasn't the love that you had had when you first started that ministry. It was almost like we had left or somehow detoured from our first love. Folks, when we ask God for a healing, be willing to get back up and go back into the service that God has called you into. We need to, it says, even a little lump leavens the whole thing. You know, one little rotten apple will spoil the whole basket one little negative attitude that we just let hang in there will begin to overpower all of our thinking and literally take us captive. Be on guard for it. Now, Jesus heals Simon's mother, mother-in-law, and she goes back to serving. Now, let's answer a question that some have used as an excuse for their illness or their lack of miracle on their, on their lives. It's found in Mark chapter 1, verses 40 to 45. Here we see where Jesus cleanses a leper. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And he strictly warned him and sent him away at once and said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone but go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city but was outside in deserted places and they came to him from every direction. You know, I've heard this many times and probably more times than I care to talk about. I wonder if Jesus gets tired of hearing this question too. If you're willing, Lord, you can make me clean. Here is the answer that Jesus gave to you and to me today. Then Jesus moved with compassion. You see, Jesus loves us. Stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing to be cleansed. Notice what the leper did. He came to Jesus. That's the first step when you want a miracle. Come to Jesus. Then he imploring him, he asked him, for what he needed, he asked him. Kneeling down to him, he bowed his life before him. These are three of the very first things that all of us need to know to do. 
Here's the one thing that the leper wondered about. Was Jesus really willing, willing to help someone like me? I'm an outcast. No one wants me. Well, they shun me and they, they tell me to go live outside the city. I'm a castaway. I can't even go into my own home. They don't even talk to me anymore for fear of getting this leprosy. Maybe I would contaminate them. They told me to leave. Even my home has rejected me. So would Jesus really want to heal me? You know, I believe that the reason that Jesus healed this leper was found in the last part of his question to Jesus. You can make me clean, the leper declared. You see, he understood that Jesus had power. But would he want to use it on him? I don't think some of us doubt that Jesus can do it but we doubt that he would do it for us. Oh, let's pray for sister so-and-so. Lord, heal her. She's a good person. Pray for her while I stand in need because I'm not that kind of person. And I, I don't know if Jesus would want to heal me. Jesus said, I will, I do, I want to heal you. And he is moved with compassion the minute you walk into his presence. This leper did not go to Jesus in doubt. Not one time, not one word was doubtful. But he wasn't sure if Jesus was willing. It wasn't about doubt of power. It was about willing to touch someone like him. I hope that maybe that's reaching someone tonight. Jesus loves you just where you are. There's some things that are just too big to be quiet about. Don't you know when the leper returned and Jesus had told him to go show himself to the priest the, the way that the law of Moses had required why, to go from where Jesus was all the way to the priest, the people would see that the leprosy was gone. There was already talk before he would even get out of the tent hardly, wherever they had met. And the whole town, even if the leper kept his mouth shut, the story would have been told by the change in him. You see, I believe that once we get into the presence of God, we'll never look the same, behave the same, talk the same. And yes, when they hear our story, people will run to Jesus just like they did there. Now then, the leper gave all the glory to Jesus. Well, how do I know that? Let's look at verse 45. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city, but was outside in deserted places and they came to him from every direction. You see, the revival is on. The people began to hear from this man who had been cleansed and the revival is on. If you want a revival in your place, you watch and see what God will do and then proclaim the word, the power, this man called Jesus, how he changed my life. People will come. They're hungry for what you have. Let's look at another healing tonight. It's found in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Jesus was in the house. Believe me, when Jesus enters the house, he can't be hidden. He's light. He's life. People know when Jesus is in the house. Verse 2, immediately many, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word. 
to them. First, the word was preached to them. Why? Well, if we look at Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes, faith comes. This is a series on miracles and healings. We need faith to come. Faith comes by hearing, hearing, and hearing by the word of God, folks. You get this word into you and your faith will rise. That's what Jesus did. He got the word into them. Verse 3, Then they came to him, bring a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Now when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Look, I want us to look. Who saw their faith? Jesus. Did you know that Jesus always looks for faith first? That's what he's looking for. In each of us tonight, he's looking at us to see if we have faith, faith in him, in his ability, his power, his authority, and his desire to make a change in our life. He must see faith in us to move forward. Verse 6, And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemy like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Verse 8, but immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were reasoning thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say the peril, to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, verse 11, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed and went out to the presence of them all so that they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. Jesus told this paralytic to go home. God wants to restore to the home. God wants to restore the home. You see, a sickness that can come over you can just separate us from those that are healthy at the home or it can spread into the home. God wants to heal you to restore your entire household. Go home, he says. Show yourself even at home. This man had to walk through the crowd to get to his home. You know, just like the leper whose spots were gone. This man who couldn't walk, they knew he had, that he'd been carried and dropped in from the ceiling by his friends. He didn't go out that way. He carried, folded up that bed and he went home he had to go through the crowd and they're going, oh, this is God. Let's look at another one. Mark chapter three, verses one through six. What am I doing tonight, folks? What am I doing? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God spent time after time after time telling a miracle, a miracle, a miracle so that your faith can rise up to receive, to take for yourself the miracle. Mark chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. And he entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. Who's watching Jesus right now? Who was watching it was a church from the pulpit to the back door. They were staring at Jesus. I wonder what he's going to do. Let me tell you, church is still staring at Jesus. I wonder what he's going to do. 
There's a spirit of faith that needs to rise up in our churches that we might call out to Jesus in faith from the pulpit to the back. I challenge each one of us, and I'll start with me. Rise up in faith. When Jesus is in the house, call out his name in faith. He desires to bring miracles that God, his Father, might be glorified. Verse 3, And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Step forward. You know, if I were that man, I'm sitting there among these people, and, and I suspect he wasn't the only one with a, a physical ailment of some kind. I have a feeling there were others. But Jesus always looks for faith in the house. And he saw this man. Yes, he had a withered hand. But he saw that man's heart. And I think in my mind that that man was saying, Jesus, Jesus, heal me. Call me. I will come forward. I'll do what you want me to do. Just call my name. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. Now, you know, Jesus wasn't supposed to, according to their doctrine, heal on Sunday, on the Sabbath. For this man to step forward, he had to go against doctrine. I told you that tonight's message is about healing for today. I don't want to step on toes, but I might. On doctrinal toes, but I might. Jesus didn't want to step on doctrinal toes, but he did. He said, step forward. And he healed that man instantly. You see, God is still in the healing business. As we step forward, he will heal us today. I've heard many doctrines, teachings. Oh, the healings were not they're not necessary for today. They were important back then to show the power of Jesus and to jumpstart the early church. Well, folks, if there's ever been a church that needed to be re-jumpstarted, it's this church today. It is our day, our time to receive miracle after miracle after miracle. God is not dead, nor are his miracles. God does not change, nor does he play favorites. What he told those uh, individuals back in the days that he walked this earth are still the same words that will go throughout e eternity to us. American miracles and healings are not dead. They're not to jumpstart. They're to give God the glory. And he still wants to do it. He said he would pour out his spirit upon us. And that was found in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Going back into Mark chapter 3, verse 5. And when he had looked around at them with anger, you know what he was angry about? That they didn't have faith in God the Father and his Son. That they were busy accusing and that they would be willing to permit even their own congregation to walk in illness. And he looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts. Oh, how much easier it is to say God doesn't do any miracles anymore. Then I don't have to believe that anymore. And so I don't have to prove God. I don't have to walk out in faith. What I see is what it is. Wow. God wants to change that in your life. Mark 3, verse 5, And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. Notice Jesus saw the conditions of their hearts while they stood right 
there in the synagogue. He wasn't talking to those that were outside the church, the unlearned, those who had never been given scripture. He was talking to those who had the Bible in their hand, the Old Testament, those first five books. There was enough there for him to be able to preach to. He was talking to the ones inside the church. Stretch out your hand today. Let him be your healer. He is still in the healing miracle working business. From faith to faith, let your faith arise as you begin to hear the testimonies of the word of God. You don't have to listen to anybody anywhere. I've had miracles in my own body, but you don't have to hear mine. There are enough miracles recorded right here to build up your most holy faith. If you have received a miracle, maybe you've been listening for the last few weeks and decided that you truly are a candidate for a miracle, then I want you to begin to write that down as a thank you, as a testimony. If you have a prayer request, write that down. But only write down the need not how you see it being answered. God will do that. And I want you to send those testimonies to my email, please. And it's dlevens, D-E-E-L-E-V-E-N-S, T-V at gmail.com. See, it's my desire to take these testimonies and just join you in praise. I want to thank the Lord. Please write on there if you're okay with me reading some of these testimonies because down the road I want to take some of these and begin to read them out. You can say, you may give my name or withhold my name. Maybe it's a miracle of healing. Maybe it's a miracle of finances, relationship, anything that was broken. But I want to be able to publicly praise the Lord for what's going on in each of your lives today. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll continue next week. God bless you. We hope you've enjoyed Kingdom Ministries with Reverend Dee Levins. For more from Dee, read The Long, Long Night, The Story of Destiny and Echoes from God, a Christian study book for growing deep and strong in the faith. Connect with Dee and purchase her books at dlevins.com. Send an email to dlevinstv at gmail.com or text Dee at 254-681-6099.